I am Lucas Mack, and I'm on a mission to see the hurting get healed and the healed go out and heal others in order for all of us to experience the true love and light we desire. This podcast is me sharing my journey with you so you don't feel alone in your journey. Welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings to each and every one of you, wherever you are around the world. I see you sending you love. And I want to, in this episode, I want to talk about what I have recently learned And in the learning of it, hopefully bless you by remembering not only who you are, but what you, specifically you, without thought of anyone else, what you are here on this earth to bring forth, manifest, and live in, and be in, and share the trueness of you. So I have gotten incredibly frustrated, incredibly frustrated with the lack of justice that I've seen. Lack of justice for all sorts of stuff stemming from my own personal life and personal experience. And that being a symbolism of the lack of justice that I see of all the, let's just be specific in the world, just purely the abuse of children, the abuse of the elderly, the abuse, someone in a power structure imposing their will upon someone with lesser than power, be it children, elderly. And then systematically, (laughs) We're all being abused by the top of the pyramid world structure and world order. They call it new. It is old. They say the right is the right and it is left. The left is the left. It's right. Up is down. Down is up. The inversion of truth everywhere. And all of us are doing our best. I mean, the energy, I can't even describe the heaviness. I'm sure you felt it too over the past what month, month and a half, it's just been so dense and so heavy for me. And I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and I was talking about justice, how angry I've been at the lack of justice. And for some reason, humanity is in its current state, unable to empathize with a victim. So for instance, people hear the term, and I hate these words because the words probably cast the spell to numb the mind, quite frankly, pedophilia, let's just say. That is the most heinous, worst thing that you can do to a child. And yet the word itself doesn't describe the acts of it. So the word kind of, it's, it's a Jedi mind trick. And it is so rampant. And even the new Supreme Court justice being lenient on um, those who practice it or have done it or in one way, shape or form affiliated with this abusing children, I was getting angry. So in this conversation, um, and I will, let me finish my thought. I was getting angry, but also frustrated that people don't want to look at it, don't want to feel it, don't want to stop it. And I'm like, the only way maybe to stop it is to do the equivalent to someone else for them to say, say stop. And like, yeah, you don't want it done to you. How could you allow it to be done to innocence? And the stripping away of innocence and the warping of the mind and the warping of, of clarity and just the, the tornado that is ripping through our society. 
and everyone's trying very hard, not everyone, those who love the truth and love love and true love, unconditional, divine, infinite love, are doing what they can to stay in that love amidst the vortex and tornado that is trying to sweep through our land, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, our bodies. So I was having this conversation with a friend and I was frustrated. I was explaining how angry I've been getting. I even wrote this one song. It's it. Um, my friend, Radiant Ray, who's been on this podcast a couple of times, she texted me one night. She's like, God just told me you have a song to write and um, go write it. And I was like, Oh, so it was like 10 o'clock at night, my time. And I go sit on the piano and it came out. We want justice. We want justice. Now we want justice. We want justice. Now, anyway, we want justice. God, I want justice. It's what my heart's cry was for the abusers to be dealt with, the truth to be revealed, the lies to no longer be kept secret, that everything that is in the dark be brought forth to the light. Justice, let us see this. That's this like engine was revving to me, revving harder and harder and harder. And I was crying out, God, and I was getting angry at God. I've been angry at God many times. God and I all let it rip on God. And then he'll be like, you done? I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm done. And then he's like, here's some clarity. So I was talking to my friend, I was talking about justice, how angry I've been that there's not justice. And she was talking and immediately she said something. I don't even know the word she said, something happened. I got this download and it it like blew my lungs open. It was like, Oh, and I always said in the podcast, if you've listened to me for a while, that how do you know if something's true is if you can breathe more deeply because the truth makes us free. So immediately I breathe deeper on this download. And the download was when I look at the lack of justice that is surrounding me in my vision and where I look and where I put my attention, it seems as if there is injustice everywhere I go. And when I get angry about it and when I want justice to be done, then I am tied to the energetic field of injustice. Even though I want justice to be done and I might feel right in wanting justice, me wanting justice indicates that there is no justice. Therefore, it is an injustice. And I am in that energetic field of injustice, which causes anger, which causes frustration, which causes all sorts of contention within ourselves and with others. And so what I saw in the download was there is always justice. In fact, it is impossible in love for there not to be justice. However, the justice, true justice is for us to no longer look upon, not to see the acts done, not to say these things are right or wrong or to rescue children or to be a stand for sovereignty, holiness, and, and healing and, and all the good. But not to get angry and say, why haven't they been exposed or taken down or or arrested or dealt with permanently? Instead, it is to, there is always justice. This is the download. And the justice is whatever I put my energy towards will manifest. So if I give my energy to the field of injustice, I will reside in injustice. But if I give my energy to my family, my wife, my children, my friends, my community, this podcast, those who I can love and bless and serve and and honor and put all of that energy that I have into the positive, that is justice because it always will be exactly what I desire. So just is is a play on words, just us. Meaning when we start looking at what we want to create, there is justice because we manifest it. And that is justice because we will always get what we desire. Always. If we're in fear, when I'm in justice, when I am in injustice, I get injustice. And that is justice (laughs) because it's equal measure to that which I want. 
Now, when I focus on what I want to create, manifest, build forth, bring forth, pour into one another, I receive that goodness. And there is justice in that. So we are always walking in justice when we focus on that which we want to manifest and those who we want to manifest it with, which is just us. So I I wanted to share that because there is justice, just us. And those who love love and those who love truth will always experience freedom when we focus on love and when we focus on truth. Because where love is present, truth will come forth, resulting in our personal freedom. This is what I said in my TED Talk two years ago. And so this has been the journey. And and wherever you are right now, whatever you're going through, even if that which you hope happens and the people and the personas and the players on the board are who you hope they are, to bring forth that which you hope will be, even if all that comes to fruition and comes to pass, it should not strip away, reduce, or eliminate in any way, shape, or form your personal knowing that they are playing their role for that specific game and your role for your game is to put forth your vision into the world. What is your vision? What are you here to create? What are you here to manifest? What are you here to pour out into the world? And this is the difference between those that live in fear and those that live in love. Those that live in fear are going to take more, more, more uh, cautionary methods that they don't get sick and they don't want to cause others to get sick and they cannot put forth manifest, bring forth into this world anything positive for themselves because the system of injustice will bring forth injustice for them. But when we separate from that and we look at what is what are our individual visions that we can bring forth, what is your vision for the world? I know my vision for the world. That's where you get to put your time and energy in. And the communities of truthers and conspiracies and or mainstream media and believing the narrative or the red and blue pill, the red and blue party, the red and blue lights that flash when police come, all this red and blue hijacking of it, you can stop it. Stand back from it and say, my vision, the vision I have for the world is, and you articulate it. Solomon wrote, where there is a lack of vision, the people perish. And without vision, we cannot have hope. And he also wrote in Proverbs, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So no vision, no hope. No hope, sick heart. Sick heart leads to death, decay, destruction, desolation, denial of one's own true reality, which is we are co-creators made in the image of the most high to bring forth by our words and create a world that we want to be in. But when we look at the world that isn't ours to create and we speak about it, we get sucked into that which we speak about, which is the lack of justice is injustice, but it is justice because we're looking at it, creating it. I hope this makes sense. This is um, this time that we are in. I don't even think I'm speaking to anyone that doesn't align with me by now. 240, I think this is my 240th podcast episode. You know who I am. You listen to me. We are here for a time to come. And that time is coming very soon. I've talked about it on many podcasts that there is something coming. We all feel it. There's something coming. I even saw in this vision that there is this wall of water. It is so high and it comes down on their side and, and God is not allowing us to see what's on the other side. We get these premonitions. I can kind of faintly understand, feel like I know what's over there, but I can't really see it because, and it's, we are right butted up against it because God's allowing those who are willing to to lose their soul say sell their soul for something in this time which is to pass 
because he won't cross anyone's will. And there's people waiting whether oh, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to save myself in the system that's going away, or I'm going to stand for what I know to be true that is coming, which is what's so beautiful about God. There's no manipulation, coercion whatsoever because God is love and in love abides the truth and in truth abides the freedom. So God just simply gives every person according to their desire, according to that which they speak. That's why Solomon also wrote, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof, because what you speak, you eat, you manifest. And we are what we eat, and we also are what we say. That's why Jesus said, let your yeas be yeas, or the book of James says, let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. For talking out both sides all the time and not clear of who we are, what we're here to bring forth, our vision for the world, we get co-opted by this, I'm going to say it, the satanic matrix system that is not human, that is not flesh, that is not of love, and it will take everything from you and give you nothing in return. Nothing. It might even give you, it it might say that it gives you money, but even the money can't satiate your desire to feel loved, known, safe, rest, peace, joy, goodness. So it is our job to speak forth. So what is your vision? What is the vision that you're here to create? Many of us, I know for me, it is to see healing. You see, the truth is coming. Truth is inevitable. It is inevitable. It is coming. When the truth gets revealed, it will either destroy. It's like a rock. Jesus says, um, I'm the rock. It will either fall upon people and they will be crushed by the rock or we stand upon the rock and we are firm on the rock, but truth is one or the other. You're going to stand in truth or truth is going to crush you, but truth is coming. It's inevitable. It's the only way we ascend. It's the only way we move forward is in truth. It's the only way we're made free. But after the truth comes the healing. After the truth comes the healing. Think about the image of a the perfect, and I don't even mean the the model father or model mother, the perfect mother in your mind, not your own parents. I don't want you to ascribe their humanism or human um, aspects and their traits to this image. I want you to picture like, what is the most loving, gracious, warm, kind, strong parent presence that you can Think of. So in a healthy relationship with a parent and a child, the child never feels in danger to speak their truth. So they will bring forth their truth, even if they know it's wrong or they did something wrong. A healthy parent relationship, parent-child relationship, is the child always feels safe enough to share the truth. So the child shares it and there's correction, not in physical form, but there's correction there's a lesson. There's possibly tears by the child just because in the presence of love, pure unconditional love, the child knows that that wasn't of love. And so it brings forth and there's always tears after confession comes tears in the presence of love. When truth is spoken, there are tears associated with it. And when the truth is spoken and the tears flow, Next comes healing. Healing always follows truth. Truth always follows unconditional love. You see, we are all coming into this place of truth. Where is the unconditional love? The unconditional love comes from you and I. And comes from God, the father, the father, God is not a spirit, nor is he a man. I mean, God is not a man. He's a spirit. What is the spirit? What is God? 
these questions are important, but I think it's a better question. These questions have been asked for a long time. I think a better question is why would God want us to see him as the father? Because that divine masculine, which gives, doesn't punish, doesn't attack, doesn't destroy, doesn't threaten, doesn't, there's no charge to it. It's just there. Listening holding space for, allows us to know that love, to receive that love, to walk in that love and be that love for every other person. And it is coming. That's why for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, God, the father shall have, um, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus says, when you pray, pray our father, it doesn't say pray to him. Jesus is our brother. He walks with us. He's the model for walking with us. And did he do what he had to do for us to understand the father's love? Yes. When we go back to the father and experience the love of God, God reveals all things inside us and we have that love. So love precedes truth. Truth precedes healing. And we are coming into this time of healing mass healing. And so that time's coming. And before then, and until then, may you, dear brother and sister, get clear on the vision that you are here to bring forth, manifest, and live out into this world. And may you, my dear brother and sister, be very clear on focusing on that vision so that you can experience the purest form of justice, just us in your own life with those that you are co-journeying with and create and build and experience and revel in all that you are here to be, do, and have. When we pour into relationships, when we pour into one another, our energy is never ciphered. It is always contained in that which we pour into. But when we give to this matrix system, it is like a tornado that will suck it up and take it away and we get nothing in return. And we are coming into this time to remember it is about pouring in to one another. And that is the podcast that I want to bring to you today, dear brothers and sisters. I love you all. I bless you all. I'm Lucas Mack. This is the Golden Rule Revolution. If you have just found me, make sure you like, subscribe on every platform. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, all the social media platforms and all the um, podcast platforms. You can go to my website, lucasmack.com and just know you're not alone. We are all going through this. We all experience it in different ways. It's bringing up our traumas in different ways, but you are not alone. And if you ever need support, you can always reach out. And at the end of this cycle, at the end, when the truth gets revealed, may you be firmly standing in love, in love. So you can hold space for others who have been in fear and will need your guidance and your support to walk them through that healing journey so that they on the other side can experience the same love that you were standing in from the very beginning. I'm Lucas Mack. I'll talk to you all on the next episode. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. For support in your journey, go to my website, lucasmack.com.